so much of where we are right now is as a result of people always talk about of covid actually it's not so much of covid it's of our covid policy in large parts of the world and western covid policy was pretty much based on what the chinese government did which was locking down people in spring of 2020 and we in the west followed suit developing countries around the world followed suit absolute devastating effects on people's livelihoods health and of course now massive long-term impacts on the global economy um we're still fighting against a lot of this i've no doubt at all we're going to have more demands when we have another wave coming up soon but there is another more sort of i suppose existential threat uh, coming up much sooner than that uh, and that is the world health organization uh they're meeting this weekend to discuss their pandemic accord a plan to allow the World Health Organization to effectively take over pandemic planning and pandemic policy across pretty much every country in the world. I think it's 190 odd countries, including Britain. So what am I right in thinking that if Britain, as we're told, they will sign up to this, um, we won't even get a say in whether we lock down again. The World Health Organization will tell us to. Is that right? Well, that's the worry. Uh, but as always with the World Health Organization, it's not very transparent. We don't really know what they're going to come up with uh, next week. It's the World Health Assembly. As you say, 194 countries are invited. One isn't. Guess what? It's Taiwan, because China doesn't want it there. Um, and uh, what they're, what is on the agenda, among other things, is, as you say, a, a pandemic accord, a pandemic pact, if you like. You mustn't call it a treaty, because then it wouldn't get through the US Senate. Um, and I think you, you and I know that countries like china will do what they do anyway they're not likely to listen to the world health organization tell them what to do but we are told that what they come up with at the world health assembly may have the force of international law uh, and we may therefore be in breach of international law if we don't lock down when the who says or mandate vaccines or um whatever else it might be now um, you know, some of those measures, undoubtedly, we will want to be taking anyway. So, you know, that's not a, a problem. Certainly, I think, you know, rolling out vaccines, sharing vaccines with other countries, these are the kinds we, of things. We, we didn't, we didn't need be to be told by someone else to do that. Well, exactly. And uh, my concern is mainly that the World Health Organization seems to be completely ignoring its own mandate from all the governments of the world to investigate the origin of the virus and therefore find out how it started. Yeah. Because one of the things I would like to see in a pandemic treaty between governments, you know, where governments agree on things to do things themselves rather than the World Health Organization telling us what to do, um, is that there should be a proper transparency about what's going on in labs all around the world, collecting viruses in the wild, going out and hunting them in bat caves, bringing them back to cities, manipulating them in labs. This has been going on in China. We're not able to know what's going on. Now, other countries do this a little bit too, um, particularly the US. Um, uh, so uh, it's not just the Chinese, but uh, the, the, the World Health Organization was trusted by the British government for two years to be the investigator of how this pandemic started. And it ignored that possibility pretty well completely for most of that time. Um, uh, that, that there might have been a lab accident. Um, and, uh, you know, so what I think we need is, rather like we have with, with atomic energy, we have sharing. We have governments uh, around the world as far as possible. If they sign up to the atomic, International Atomic Energy Authority Treaty, they have to share their information about what they're up to. We do something similar with airline accidents. Yeah. You know, if a plane crashes, what was in the black box doesn't but remain... We, but we don't uh, do it over something that could cause a worldwide pandemic, killing millions of people and damage, devastating our lives and our freedoms and our economies. This is the extraordinary thing. Look, you've written a brilliant book. We talked to you about it before, viral, along with Alina Chan, uh, about all of this. And this is the thing. So we're to trust an organisation that basically um, changed its tune uh, on every issue when it came to the pandemic, depending on what China had told them to do. There's, these are, I mean, Dr. Tedros, as he's known, the leader of the World Health Organization, basically got his position uh, because he's sort of in cahoots with the Chinese. This China, the World Health Organization is funded by America and China mostly. Um, they, uh, it's an unelected, unaccountable body, um, which the fact that you say Taiwan isn't invited to this meeting because the Chinese don't recognize Taiwan as a separate state, but pretty much the rest of the world pretty much de facto does. Um, but we play along with this. That tells you everything, that this is not a body we can trust. They, they have 
they've you know chopped and changed on their policy again and again i mean they did have a very sensible pandemic policy um which was what we should have done which is what sweden did during the whole of the pandemic uh, and, and very successfully as uh, excess death data does actually show us now but they basically they basically kowtowed for want of a better expression to everything that the chinese government did didn't they and the idea that this is a body that's unelected unaccountable and untrustworthy proven itself to be untrustworthy and that they should have any say over what we do in our country when it comes to dealing with the pandemic, and particularly when it comes to taking away basic civil liberties against, by the way, all previous pandemic advice. I find, I mean, chilling and frankly terrifying, don't you? Well, uh, the World Health Organization has a poor track record. It didn't do very well over the Ebola epidemic. It delayed realizing there was an emergency because some of its uh, member uh, countries didn't want, uh, said doctors were screaming that, that there was a problem. Um, it did uh, then over the COVID pandemic, of course, it was uh, basically endorsing the Chinese line that there was no human transmission long after it became clear that there was. So it, you know, it, it was partly responsible for the fact that we stumbled in, stumbled very badly when this pandemic yeah. began. So yes, this isn't an organization that, uh, you know, it's an organization that should have a huge drains up look at why it didn't perform well, instead of which there's no way for you, me, or any other one, including Boris Johnson, to, to get that done. You know, it, this is a, no. an organization that's basically self-sustaining. You hand over your money and then uh, it does what it uh, considers best. Now, in the case of China, they go around saying, if you elect Dr. Tedros as director general, you might get a new airport and things like that. That worked very well for them. They got yeah. their man in there who had already been an ally when he was health minister and foreign minister in Ethiopia. Um, so so that was that was one thing uh, that worked well. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to recall these people. It's hard to yeah. deselect I'm, them if we don't like okay, what The they're reason up I was to. a Brexiteer, um, I want accountable people who are elected, I've got to say, in getting into power and getting rid of. And I don't want anyone in control of whether I can leave my home or visit my mum or go to work uh, being signed. I don't think you can decide any of that who've got no accountability to me. Uh, Matt Ridley, uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us.